Hello guys, my name is Kaushik and welcome back to Let Code. In our previous video, we have learned how to get the ID value using our Chrome extension. Today, we are going to check whether the value whatever we have got is going to be unique in the DOM or not. So for that, the simple trick we used to find that is unique or not in the DOM using XPAR is going to be using the double slash then followed by the star symbol, right? So let me show you that. Here, if I inspect this, here we can see that it has value of ID, right? So let me maximize this. Here we can see that here we have this value called full name that is equivalent of ID attribute, right? I'm going to copy this and here I can say double slash without tag name, I can use the star. That means it is going to denote any of the tag name, right? And within the square bracket, I have to give add then id equal to then within single quotes, I have to pass the value. Now, in case if you got this value as one of one, that means it is going to be unique. But if, if it's not going to be one of one, then of course we can assume that the id value is not unique in our DOM. So using the same technique, I'm going to find using our Chrome extension. So let me copy this and let me comment all this here so we know it as of now so i'm just going to delete this and i'm going to paste this here right so before that let us create a value as maybe id pattern and here i'm going to use the back ticks and within that i'm going to paste the value now this full name should be dynamic in nature so of course i cannot use the full name directly so for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the target element and from there i can easily get my id value right and let me store this so let id value equal to this one right now this id and this target element we are getting from our um, global value which we are getting on doing the mouse down and click so whenever we are going to do the right click and get x path it is going to save that in this target element as an event right and from that event target we are getting this id value now here instead of this full name this place we have to pass our id value so whatever the id value we are going to get from the runtime we have to pass that so i'm going to use the dollar and here i'm going to within the curly braces i'm going to pass the id value right this again back text in java esx i can say it is similar to your um plus plus concatenation operation that is going to be exactly same but using back tips is like very easier to read the code as well as to write the code i can say now here we are going to check whether this id pattern is going to be unique or not right so for that i'm just going to create a new function which is going to return us the count of the any x path so here i can say get count of x path and within the argument of course we know that we have to get the x path and then of course this is going to be a function type so here i can say function that's it right now of course i have to pass this here and this is going to be our id pattern that is our x path right that's pretty cool but here we have to write the logic like how we are going to get that id I mean the count of the x path right within this method we are going to use the document dot evaluate function to find the pattern first so for that if i go to this documentation here i can see we have a method called x path results from where we will get all the values right so i cannot use that directly i have to use that within this document dot evaluate so let me right click and here i can see that within this console here i can write document dot evaluate and within this evaluate function i can see it needs five arguments so one is going to be the expression that is our x path then another one it's going to be our context node that is the current document and then we have to say the resolver which is like optional so i can pass it as null and then the last one also i can pass it as null and in between we have option but we are interested to say like what is the x path pattern or the result we are going to get so let me write that 
So here I can say document dot evaluate and within that I have to pass my X path then followed by the document and here I have to say the null and the last value is going to be also null and here we have to pass the X path result. Now X path result have so many types I can say but we are as of now we are going to use this any type that means it can be any type but for sure we will talk about this in detail maybe in our upcoming videos. And here this evaluate method is going to return me as X path value in the node type but actually we want this as a count right so for that we have a method called count here so if I go to the document and if I search for count here we can see we are getting this count as a function right so we have to use that and here I can say dot number value which means using the function of count it is going to return the matching numbers so here we have to say this x path we are going to get the count of this x path right so here I can say count maybe I have to give within this back text because that is going to be a function of string data type I can say so here I can say count and here within this I have to pass dollar then my x path right now let me store this in a variable so let maybe I can say count equal to right okay and here I'm going to just log my count so that we can understand how many values we are going to get so just let me add some string concatenation the count of the ID maybe or we can say the count right just a string concatenation so that we can see the console log right and also we have already called this function within my pass dom function so whatever the value we are going to get from here we are going to convert that into an x path and then we are passing that x path to our this function where we are just evaluating this and we are trying to get the count now this might little confusing for you in the very first but this is how the java syntax looks like and this is how we have to use the count function for evaluating the x path so let me go to my browser and if I go to this extension and refresh and if I go to our page and refresh and here if I go and right click and get x path here we can see the count of the x path is going to be 1 so of course we know that that is going to be 1 so we got the output as exactly now let me try for another one so here also it's going to say for 1 because we have that one now let's say that we also want to print the x path right so here i can say whatever the value we are going to get let me write a if condition so if it is going to be unique then only i want to print that right so here i'm going to store whatever we are going to return so here only we are just printing so here let me return this so return count and here i'm going to say let count equal to right so what are the count we are getting we are returning here and then we are storing this in a local variable now here i'm going to write if condition if count is going to be one then i can simply print out that right so let's log that and here i can say id pattern cool right but also we also want to know if there is some duplicate so let's say that let's up so let us print that as a duplicate maybe so here i'm going to say with a string duplicate that's pretty much enough now let me go to my browser and as usual refresh then refresh and here if i'm going to write this get x path here we can see we are getting this as x path now let me copy this and here if i go and control f and control v of course we can see one of one right so this is pretty much cool i think now let us try to get another one so here i'm going to get this and here also we can see id equal to join which is coming from this element so let me copy and check again so we got this as exactly correct right but this star i don't want instead of that i want to get my tag name there so what can i do is here 
using this target element I can store that within a tag so here I can say let tag equal to target element dot tag name is the JavaScript property I can say which is going to give us this tag name now instead of star this is going to be useful for us to find whether the xpath pattern is unique or not but when we are going to give this to the user instead of star I want to just make it as the tag name original tag name so what we can do is here I can again write like this so id pattern equal to the same value so let me just copy and paste it here And instead of this star, I can again use the string interpolation here. And here I can pass the tag as a value, right? So you're getting my point, right? So here we are getting this, we are storing the xpath in the id pattern as a variable. And we are passing that to our uh, xpath evaluate, evaluate method where we are actually getting the count. And whatever the count we are going to get from here, we are returning that in this particular method. And using that, we are checking this as if the value is going to be 1, we are just manipulating the value again, right? And then we are printing this value here. If it's going to be duplicate, of course, we will get this as duplicate. So let me try to run this again. And here, if I go and write get x path, in the console, we can see that we are getting this. But the problem here is the input is coming within the, I mean, not within the, it is coming as uh, uppercase right the reason is very simple so if i take this id here and here if i say document sorry so document dot get element by id and here if i pass this value and if i say dot tag name it is going to give us in the uppercase always that is how html works i mean the javascript works so what we are going to do is we are just going to convert this to a lower case right so here i can say tag name dot to lower case that's pretty much fine so let us check again so here i'm going to refresh refresh and here i'm going to get this right so here we got this let me copy and go to my element and control f control v so of course one of one obviously we got this as correct right now let's try to manipulate some of the value so here i'm going to make this as maybe full name so let me copy the value here and here i'm going to make this as full name so now this time we should expect the value as duplicate right so let me copy not copy so let me get the x path and if i go to my console here i can see it's giving us a duplicate so in this way we can find the id now, this is not only for id we can check for the name class name or any attribute i can say but as of now, we are just going to get only the ID pattern, right? But let's say that if I go into this one, here we have this H1 and we do not have any ID, right? So if I do right click and get X path, and if I go to my console, here also we can see that the it is, it is going to get us zero, right? So of course, it is going to get into the else part where we have written this as a duplicate. But actually, what we need to do is we have to find each and every attribute and the value, not only the ID, right? So in the next video, we are going to see how to generate other attributes and the value using XPath. So I hope you have enjoyed the video and you have learned this. So it is going to be very, very easy. Just it is going to be most of like string concatenation and the string manipulation, I can say. So moving forward, it is going to be very easy. Just stick to us, stick to let code, stick to this extension. Probably you will learn so many things from my side, I believe. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Um, stay home, stay safe. Take care, Tata. Bye.